morning guys Friday morning uh, yesterday I completed filling the voids on this uh, lento with uh, mortar I just use a conventional Portland cement based mortar just because I wanted this to be uh, super strong uh, yeah just uh, shoved it all in the crevices as much as I could pushed it in a lot got spilled over the floor but uh, I need to get my uh, swing back in my hands it'll take some time it's uh, it's set it's not fully cured but uh, that will take a couple of days I guess but it's set and I've released the tension in the supports and uh, yeah the beam is sitting there I just need to uh, sand it up you know get rid of those cement marks on the on the wood itself but uh, i'm sure it will look good yeah so today uh, half a day work because we are going back to the south again pick up nadia's uh, grandma and bring her up here and uh, collect our second car as well so this afternoon we're going to drive, it's a three and a half hour drive without stopping. And this morning I'm just going to focus on uh, clearing up, tidying up, emptying the small house. Because uh, next week they're coming to uh, deposit the concrete for the floor. During the time that I was working here, there were always uh, three or four of those uh, bumblebees around and uh, they wouldn't go away. And now uh, Nadia did some research online in the life of the bumblebee, but apparently they have a, uh, they have a hole here, a nest. Not that it said online that there was a bumblebee nest here, but uh, she found out that they do nest in buildings, in crevices, etc. They have a lifespan of uh, 30, 30 days. So, here's another one going around. Hey, buddy. Cool, did you see that? So I've, I've now, we've now witnessed seeing a tree going in the little cavity and there's at least one more around. <laughs> I was afraid I would have accidentally uh, closed off the cavity where they would live because I, I didn't know where... Hey, they're coming out! All three of them coming out. I didn't, I didn't know until now in which cavity they would live and I assumed that I accidentally knocked it closed <sighs> crap they gotta move out before Friday because Friday they're gonna deposit the concrete and pretty sure yeah, that, that will be covered oh crap they gotta move out eh Okay, need to do a little bit more research. See how we can how we can chase them out of their hole. Otherwise, we got a little uh, humanitarian disaster here. All right, let's get to work emptying out the shed, the little house. See you later. Okay, well, I I must admit we do discriminate here. Some uh, animals will get a better treatment than others. I just found a fucking big spider and uh, the vacuum cleaner is gonna deal with him. Have a look. Hey buddy. Time to say prayers. You're gonna meet your maker. Anything I hate, it's spiders. 
Opa! Bye bye spider. Jesus Christ, that was a big one. Ugh. Vacuum cleaner. Do his job. Ah, I hate spiders. Ugh. It's a family thing. We don't like them. I know it's it's uh, it doesn't make any sense to be afraid of spiders. Not the ones here in Europe, because they they don't harm you. But it's a family thing, you know. This uh, irrational fear is brought upon me by my grandma. And the result is that the whole family is afraid of spiders now. The result is that the whole family is suffering from an irrational fear. Nadia also found out that uh, apparently these bumblebees recognize faces. That is human faces. So. You know, we've been together now, me and the bumblebees, for like a month, almost a month. So, maybe we have some sort of relationship now. Maybe they recognize me and they trust me that I don't destroy their habitat. You know, they're always around. Don't know whether the microphone picks up the sound, but they're always around. A tough call, but if they haven't moved out by Friday, and we haven't found a way to uh, evict them, then uh, they'll be buried alive. So, I've been moving stuff around, tidying up a little, bringing those beams down. These beams have to lay flat, otherwise they go banana shaped. It's uh, too young wood, and for the weekend we'll not be here. So I'll process them uh, Monday, no, Tuesday. Back at work, they're going to be uh, the uh, Horizontal transverse beams in the loft. Yeah, I uh, bought one extra because of extra support, and then I decided, well, for 25 euro, I might buy a second one. So we'll have two more beams as they initially were, which is uh, which is the smart. Cool. Right. Continue cleaning up, tidying up. The Tuesday morning I want to start digging the floor and prepping for uh, concrete. No, that was it. See that little that little circular hump thingy there? Right. In the corner? You can't see it, but right. it kind of looks like a barnacle. Uh -huh. That looks like one of maybe their little, one of their little, uh, I don't know what they call them, part of the nest. Okay. Alright, let's get But I don't little... see anyone else in there. No, it's just it's just bumblebees. And I don't see them going any deeper really. So that must have been it. Okay, let's go. Not the best looking uh hive there guys. I don't think you need to work on your skills. Anyway, that's open now. We should vacate. We'll give him until Monday. And you said Friday. Well, yeah, okay, Fr yeah, you Friday. You can't go back on that now, and you told them. Yeah, okay. It's not bad, is it? No. This one? Yeah. Yeah. He just knocked this is what this is. He knocked this wall down from where we left and then put in that thing. That lintel across the concrete and then we're not having a door out there is good for you. Well it's just not necessary and then if we leave it we leave space in here. And I want to have like a window seat in here, like built in bench seat. And then like a desk with a table there. So this room will be what we make a terrace up there. With big double doors opening from the main bedroom on the terrace. And then here, in there is the kitchen in the middle house. Right. And we 
open this wall up. Prix de mètre cube d'eau en euro. Oh, how much is it? One... One euro seventy-nine for a cubic meter of water. But that's all tax. Yeah. Oh, and that total price is uh, two, two euro twenty for a cubic meter of water for a thousand liter of water. Is that a lot? I have no idea. It's less than what you pay for mineral water in the supermarket. That's for sure. As long as the water goes on, it yeah. is cost whatever it costs. Do you have any idea when they will come? They said it will be done within two months, didn't they? Right. Or a month and a half. Right. I don't know, but they're they're talking about it, and also for the sewage. Yeah. Because I called them to find out when is when is the sewage going up, uh, happen, you know? Yeah. I've been asking for over a month. Yeah. Um, and I said, we're leaving mid-July. Yeah. So he said that he'd call me back at some point or at least let me know Yeah. after talking to the boss. Okay, cool. To get a date. Cool. Okay. Okay, come on, let's go. Tuesday morning, uh, just back from uh, saint sur la -Popie. And uh, finally, I managed to pick up my parcel from the local post office. It's sitting there waiting for me, and I think I know what it is. I think it's my new Makita hand drill. At least I hope. different than my old one let's find my old one so uh, three years ago when I started building the camper van I moved back to Europe and I bought myself uh, a new kit of tools and I had this Makita 18 volt hand drill uh, came in a nice package but it turns out that the ones with the white battery top are different than the normal uh, uh, 18 volt uh, LXT equipment. The ones with the white battery top are made for uh, normal consumers, and the other ones are professional. And you can hear the difference. Now, the reason why I bought this one is because one of the two batteries that came with this one uh, decided to stop working. So I had only one battery left and I don't think we can buy these batteries separate loose. So I decided let's go for it and I ordered, finally, I ordered a little uh, 18 volt hand drill with the clip that you can hang on your tool belt. Fits with all the other batteries that I have and the sound is different. Yeah, it's a beauty. <laughs> I'm really happy. Weight difference is not much, but it's a little bit smaller. Comes with a little light. And, uh, yeah, it's just good to have one. So I can use one for screwing and one for drilling. Really happy. Um, I'm not really a brand fetishist. My theory is that all the tools that you use all the time need to be of a decent brand and uh, need to be easy and nice to handle. And I find that Makita is for me the best brand uh, when you look at quality versus price. Today um, I need to uh, continue with the floor in the little house because um, it's Tuesday today, Friday they come and deliver the concrete. I need to dig it out and uh, tidy it up and prepare it for concrete. So there will be uh, quite a few days of hard labor. Okay, so I've spent the last hour uh, sort of tidying up the floor a little bit. 
all the loose gravel and the, the real uh, dirt, scooped it up, put it in the buckets. Now I'm gonna have to uh, start digging out the floor where it needs to be. Um, if we look behind us, that is gonna be the kitchen floor and that's basically a base. Uh, my zero point, my baseline. What I've done is I've set up the laser as you can see there, that's my laser. And I've measured with this uh, yardstick that my, my baseline, I don't know whether you can see it, whether it registers. Yeah, probably, probably you can see it. Um, that is the, the height of the kitchen floor. So, when I put my yardstick on the kitchen floor, the laser line will be at that point. Now, I need to dig about 13 centimeter deep, meaning the floor that I'm going to dig to, the level that I'm going to dig to, is approximately 13 centimeter below the kitchen floor. This calculation is because I am having approximately 11 centimeters of concrete deposited, then we get insulation board, then we get uh, floor heating and then we get tiling. So I want to come almost to the same or basically at the same level as the kitchen floor, as close to it as I can. So measuring this out on my yardstick, I have my baseline and I have 13 centimeters above another line and that's where we need to get to where I'm holding the stick now is at the point where I want to go to is at the required depth now I can use this stick to measure in several places how much more I need to dig out it's all not really precise but you know what this is an old house I don't want it to be really really precise got to be sort of a bit new, uh, natural, right? So I can use this stick as a tool to find out how deep I need to go. And we're going to use the hammer because in some places there are tiles and some places there's concrete. I'm not really sure what this floor consists of. I don't have to dig out too much though. Nice. Let's get on with it. cutting the entrance here and uh, we found a hole. I God knows what it is. I hope it's not a underground tank or and the thing is we Friday we get 1.75 cube cubic meter of concrete delivered. I don't want to have two big surprises right now. But on the other hand, Wanna open it up? Have to. Just go for it. And then if it uh, is a big hole. And we fill it up with the stuff from the garden. Great. It's gonna be hard work. Extra work, but at least we've got somewhere to put all the stuff. Okay. Just, well, there's no. You can't just fill it in now and then pour on top of it. We have to get it down lower anyway. No, no, 
no, no, no, so not really. We just have, to, just have to go lower. No, we don't have to. We don't have to go lower here. This is pretty okay already. Why let me make the call? Okay, I'll cut a little bit. A little bit by little bit, let's see. Yeah. End of the day, four o'clock. What is today? Wednesday. And Friday they come and deposit, pour the concrete. What have we done? We have, I have, dug out the floor uh, to uh, the level that I wanted, 13 centimeter on average below the floor in what is going to be one day the kitchen. A lot of brake work, uh, even the mud, the sand of this floor, I had to use the, uh, the hammer, the hammer drill for it to make it all loose and then I raked it and, and scooped it up. I've, I think I got close to about 750 kilograms of sand uh, out of this uh, place and concrete and rocks and stones and also a bit of the, uh, of the rendering that's on the wall. Anyway, um, we'll see how it goes. It's quite exciting because concrete will come and uh, this truck will stop and I think we've got 45 minutes to get everything out and the excess we either got to pay for for it to be discarded or we got to have a place to, uh, to keep it. I have these big uh, uh, 80 liter uh, plastic buckets that we use to bring uh, debris to the tip. I'm going to make sure that these are all empty, that if there is too much concrete, that uh, we can empty it in these buckets. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a bit exciting, because that's like the moment. I have ordered slow drying concrete. That is just uh, 
that's going to be the trick up my sleeve. Because I'd rather have it uh, taking a few more days to dry, to cure, than too fast and I'm not ready and i got to spend a whole lot more money to get it all properly flat. Yeah, okay, cool. We'll see what, uh, how much time Nadia has tomorrow to help. She has been really busy entertaining her grandma with her friend. Um, and, and she's been doing paperwork as well, uh, uh, filing the applications for the plans of all the changes we want to make. Important stuff. Anyhow, I'll see you tomorrow. So, cool. So we have today installed these plastic angle corner strips that I had laying around. Uh, they are all at the height of where I have to screed the concrete down. We have this metal spike in the ground at the level where we want to have the concrete and then we have uh, the angles on the wall, screwed in the wall. So we can, uh, we have these reference points to screed down the concrete. Then we have installed this uh, strip. This is like a, a centimeter, 10 mil thick strip that goes along the edging, along the parameters of the wall, uh, allows the concrete to expand and contract. And then we have this tarp um, installed keeping the moisture in the ground and not and preventing it from being pulled up into the concrete. We've tried to bring the tarp up in on the on the walls so that we uh, we really try to isolate the concrete from uh, from from the dirt underneath. The dirt is really compact, so this is a good base to uh, pour the concrete on. And then I have these these garden these borders uh, edge borders border edges concrete thingies that we found here, I'm smashing them up and I'm just using them to, uh, to keep the top in the corners and where it needs to be. Now after this we're going to install the rebar, tie the rebar together and, and raise it with some uh, blocks underneath so that it's off the ground, not too far and that, that's it for today really. Cool, so uh, I'm going to smash up some more of these concrete uh, garden edging and then uh, tidy up and install the uh, the rebar we have some very angry bees yeah well. very angry um, bumblebees that were nesting somewhere down here in the wall and I've kind of coaxed them out of there and we've had to close it up and they're pretty angry mm. Mm -hmm. I hope no one's trapped in there yeah you won't believe it I've been working there for more than a week with those honeybees. Never bothered me. Bumblebees. Bumblebees. But what happened to you, Nadia? I got stung. You got stung. I wasn't even doing it. I was just working in the room next to where they make a, made their home. And I was just working and then I felt a really sharp sting on my arm. A bloody bumblebee. Well, at least he died. Well, he's either he's either dead or he's just writhing around on the ground for some other reason. But no, I ripped it off. You ripped it off from your arm. Yeah, the bee. Oh wow. Yeah. Because I know bumblebees can sting multiple times. They can. Yeah. Oh, okay. Without so they dying. Look... Whereas a regular like honeybee can only sting once. Bumblebees can sting several times. So it's possible why it's got that weird shape. Mm, horrible. Gee, did you have your sleeve pulled up? Or yeah. Down? No, no, down. It stung me through my top. Oh. Okay, well, Nadia is. Well, Nadia is goofing outside. Nadia. Yes. Look. What? Look at what Mama did. A little painting of our house. Oh, really? Oh, well, it's a bit grainy now, but we'll come. We'll come and see it when we come over. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. How cool is it? That's really cool. Oh, I'm so to see it. Nadia's grandma is an accomplished painter, and she uh, sketched our house. Right, so rebar down, 
I, um, I don't have those fancy plastic uh, distance holders. The floor is quite uneven under it anyway, so we use uh, leftover concrete uh, garden borders to create the distance. It's all, uh, it's all done, it's ready for, for tomorrow. It's going to be exciting, it's really going to be exciting. I've never done it before, pouring concrete. Uh, yeah, anyway, time to call it a day. It's a public holiday here, so I shouldn't be working anyway. Bye-bye. Soaking wet, I, I can't do anything. That's Probably. not so bad, though, is it? No, no, I think, I think it's okay. It's pretty, pretty damn flat. Yeah. With some leveling concrete, we'll fill the, the dimples and then uh, I think we're good. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. So that was a uh, fairly quick pour. Uh, that came out a lot quicker than I thought, than I expected. I thought the uh, concrete to be thicker. I, I actually asked for thin concrete, slow drying, because I thought that gives me maximum flexibility with regards to uh, making it all flat and even and level. And the more liquid it is, the more self-leveling it is. Uh, I calculated that we needed 1.5 cubic meter that is uh, 1500 liters we ordered uh, 1.75 because you had to order in increments of 0.25 so it was either 1.5 or 1.75 and I figured you know better have a little bit too much than too little on the other hand if we had way too much we would have been charged um, for not using it because they have to discharge it obviously because it's going off uh, so we had all our buckets prepared for uh, storage of uh, not used concrete but uh, they were not needed uh, because we used 1.6 didn't we? or 1.5? we had 300 oh we had 300 liters, liters left. left and we ordered 1.75 so we used 1.45 a little bit less than what I calculated. Okay. Yeah, I was just saying, Mary says it's too boring. I don't think it's Very nice. It's my house. Yes, I love all these gates here, but they're too big. These beautiful old gates. Come from a 
chateau. And it's, uh, the center spot was definitely around two months. Yeah. And I can't see exactly. But it had big cupboards, you can just put this as your facade and then yeah. you build behind. Yeah. Yeah. You just build out of concrete shelves. Yeah, and concrete behind. shelves and put that on. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah, I've yeah. had enough concrete for today. Yeah.